Hello guys, welcome back to Custom Gamer. My name is Daz and today we're having a look at a new Quake editor called Trench Broom. This is by a man called Sleepwalker who's been around in the Quake scene for a long time. He's released some Quake deathmatch maps, some Quake 2 deathmatch maps. But recently he's just been working on tools of which Trench Broom is the result. It's a completely 3D editor, there are no 2D views which is uh, fairly refreshing for Quake editors. I think every other editor has had like a 2D view of some sort. This editor is also open source, so if you feel you've got something to bring to the project, you can go ahead and download the source and do whatever you like to it. It's also available currently on Windows and Mac OS X. I believe Linux is coming soon. I don't want to speak for him, but I think I had that somewhere. I'm sure you can uh, go and have a look on the website and find out what the skinny is on that. So this video is just going to be an introduction to the editor, some kind of common editing uh, kind of shortcuts and just how to get a, get around the editor and get things done quickly. So I hope you'll find it interesting and I will see you next time. Okay, so when you first load up the editor it'll look something like this. As you can see we've got our main 3D view here which is where we'll do all our editing. There are no 2D views in Trench Broom which might seem a bit alienating at first but you get used to it very quickly. Luckily the controls are very intuitive once you learn a couple of the uh, shortcuts. We've got our entity panel here, which loads all our Quake entities in. As you can see, it even populates them with images of what each one is, which is quite nice. And then we've got our entity dialog box here, our face editing box for applying textures, and various options for the view. So what do you have to do when starting a map? Well, you start off with the default map here. There's a couple of differences between this and other editors. Uh, let's go to the map properties here. So. As you can see here, we have to choose an entity de definition file to use. Uh, Trench Broom will load definitions from Worldcraft FGD as well as .def files, which I think are from the Radiant family of editors. Maybe maybe they're used in other editors as well. I'm not quite sure where they come from, but it will load either or. So if you have a Quake FGD for Worldcraft, it will load that just fine. You don't need to mess around here. So you can just choose the one you want. We want to edit for Quake, so bam, there we go and just choose a subdirectory of the mod you want to edit for. We're just making a standard Quake map, so we want to keep ours set to id1. Now the main difference here when choosing texture adds is that the texture adds are stored on a per map basis, whereas in Worldcraft and Hammer, WADs are stored kind of globally and then are just added to the WAD key in the map file when you, set, when you uh, save and compile it. So let's have a look here. I've got thousands of Quake WADs here, let's just uh, Add the Quake 1 WAD. Absolute is fine, so there we go. So now we've got our Quake stock textures loaded. So we can close that and start editing. So to edit, you just click and drag and it will create a brush in the 3D view as you can see here. As you can see here, it's uh, automatically applied to world spawn. So you don't need to do anything crazy like that. So, to move the view, just right click to look to kind of look around, scroll around. If you want to rotate around an object, you just hold alt and right click and you can kind of spin around the object like on a pivot, like if you use 3D Studio or Maya. This probably seems very familiar. So, you just left click the object, you can move it around. If you shift and left click, you can see I'm selecting different faces as I move around. And you don't need to be inside the actual uh, brush to select. As you can see, I can go right off to this side and it's still highlighting brushes, brush faces. This is really important, it makes it very easy to resize brushes without having to spin the camera around all over the place. So as you can see here, I can select the bottom face. While still holding shift, you can just left click and uh, move it around. And again with the sides, like so. Makes it very easy for uh, editing different faces. So we're just going to create, I don't know, let's have a 128 by 128 brush because that's pretty standard size I guess. There we go, as you can see you've got the uh, dimensions here on the sides. So we've got ourselves a cube, let's uh, throw a texture on it. So we're going to go to the face edit. Alright, let's just pick a simple texture as we're not going to mess around too much here. One of my favourite textures, Metal 4 underscore 7. 
and now as you can see all the faces have that texture on it. You can middle click with the mouse to move the screen around like this. Again right click kind of looks around, middle click will actually move the camera. And the alt right click again to rotate around. You get used to it pretty quickly and the mouse wheel will scroll in and out. Now as you can see here the texture isn't quite aligned. Now uh, moving brushes up and down, you can see that when you're inside the brush without any modifiers pressed down you can move it kind of left and right and back to front but you can't move it up and down. You just hold sh uh, ALT. <laughs> I haven't used this editor too much yet but yeah ALT will move it up and down. You can see the uh, icon on the cursor changes. So left left and right back and forth, hold ALT, move it up and down and again shift to uh, move the faces. Alt right click to rotate around. I'm just going to keep repeating the command so it sinks in. So uh, that's one of the, you really have to get used to the camera controls because that's your main editing technique here. So we have a brush. What if we want another brush? Control and D will duplicate the current selection. So let's just uh, duplicate a couple of these. There we go. So now we have four brushes. As you can see here the textures aren't quite aligned. So what we want to do is, if you hold control and left click on the brushes you can select all of them. And it looks like texture lock is currently on which is probably why these aren't aligned properly. So we can go... Oh, where is texture lock? Here we are. Toggle texture lock and turn that off. And then we can Align these a bit better. There we go. That looks much better. Turn texture lock back on. Okay, you can click outside of brushes to deselect everything. If you want to select multiple things, you can actually draw a brush. Uh, like so. And then I believe there is there is probably a shortcut for this, but I don't know it. So you can see here you've got select all, select sibling, select touching. Select touching, if you do control T, okay, so we do control T and all the brushes that that brush we made is touching will be selected. Uh, this functionality is in other editors but typically you just kind of draw a selection box in Hammer and Worldcraft. In Trench Broom there is no such thing as a selection box, you have to create a brush and then use that. So we've got our four brushes here we have textures aligned. Now one of the cool things about the trench broom, which I'm going to show you now, let's just uh, set these brushes together. Let's select this brush. Let's get a better view. So we can hit V and we go into vertex editing mode, as you can see here. And then we want to kind of select a type of uh, a type of vertex that we want to move. So we can click on the sides here and as you can see all the side all these, sorry not side but edge vertices will be selected on all your selected uh, brushes. If we select an edge vert vertice you can see it now selects all the edges so you can kind of pare down the type of vertexes that you want to edit and we can click the actual face as well so we'll put a vertex on each face that we can then edit. So again that, that just works a lot like the standard brush editing. Now one of the cool things about trench broom is if we select a uh, edge vertex here, if we extrude this out you'll notice that it automatically splits the face here in order to keep the brush a valid shape. This is something that Worldcraft and Hammer do not do much to their detriment. It makes creating kind of angled geometry like this ridiculously complex when it should be very very simple. So you can see here I can move this brush around, uh, not not the brush but the vertex, I can move it around all over the place. This is probably looking very painful for hammer users right now. See I can move it and again it's the same controls for moving a vertex as it is for moving a brush so I can move it in the 2D kind of plane here. If I want to move it up and down I just hold alt and I can do that as well and you can see it's automatically split the faces here, here 
and underneath here so this brush shape is still completely valid if you've done this in Worldcraft or Hammer you'd be getting all kinds of horrible compile errors <laughs> now the fantastic thing is that we can actually select this and it'll move the vertexes on both brushes and again it's splitting faces to keep the, uh, the shapes valid so you can see here you've got this kind of crazy looking geometry shape just made out of two cubes and it's still perfectly valid which is an awesome feature another awesome feature if we just select everything we've got here there we go Oops. excuse me I'm still learning the key shortcuts myself so might be a few mistakes here and there so we've got our brushes here you can press C to bring in the clipping so this is the same kind of clipping as you have in Worldcraft, Hammer, Radiant essentially you just select two points and it will clip between them in Trench Broom you have a three point clipper which is, again is a feature that is missing from Worldcraft and Hammer once again much to their detriment I don't know why Valve won't add this stuff it seems like basic functionality to me so three point clipping if you haven't used an editor that does this before you can put two points on which is probably very familiar for uh, kind of Worldcraft users and then you can actually put a third point on there you go which lets you kind of clip in 3D like this using three points and then I'm not sure which part it will keep here I can't remember how it works and I can't remember the shortcut for flipping the clipping plane either so uh, there is a readme with all the shortcuts in it I'm sorry I'm kind of bodging this I will uh, I will uh, look it up after this tutorial of course so just hit enter ah oh, there you go so it keeps the orange section and clips the white section so we've just clipped off using three point clipping an edge on the side there and of course you can clip you can do some crazy clipping with this like whoops oh, I've deselected everything okay so let's reselect clip one there one there one there so you can see here we've got another three point clip which goes through the brushes there and again it's it's splitting faces here to make sure it keeps a valid shape afterwards you can press C again to cancel if you don't want to do that so one really handy technique you can do with this especially with the vertex editing being as a uh, as competent as it is you can create kind of arrays of uh, brushes like this so if we just do that now quickly we'll just create a brush let's say 64 by 64 like so I'm just going to create a quick array of brushes here, not going to take too long about it. Okay, again, using control to multi select, uh, control D to uh, duplicate the current selection. Now, when you duplicate it, it will kind of offset your selection slightly so that uh, you're not kind of duplicating and having brushes inside other brushes and then forgetting about them. It's a very good idea there. <laughs> I think just one more set like this let's move it up okay so you have an array of brushes like this and then if you just select them all in fact let's make this uh, let's go along a little bit more like this it's kind of more of what I want so you can select everything here like this hit V go to the edge manipulation and this is a really great way to create terrain for your map I mean this is obviously if you just want to create kind of a flat wall with a rocky outcrop you can just start extruding edges like this and it'll split all the faces and all the brushes keep them all valid now again this probably isn't much help to uh, hammer users for the Half-Life 2 source engine because obviously you have displacement edges but if you're doing any kind of brush based terrain in Quake or Quake 2, any other brush based engine that doesn't have something like displacements, this is an invaluable technique. So you can see here you just extrude all the faces that you want, like so. 
again, this is the most basic way of doing it. So you can have brushes going in a kind of semicircle shape. You could you could almost have like a cavern built out already, and then just extrude all the faces to make it look more rocky. There's just lots of ways you can do it. So there you go. That'll do for now, just uh, as a demonstration, I suppose. And there you go. You have one rocky rock surface. So that's the editor in a nutshell. Uh, it's very, very powerful. Again, this it's still in beta, so there's still lots of functionality that can be added. Uh, something I would say is that the, the entity editor is perhaps a bit rudimentary. Uh, entity Actually placing entities in the map is fairly easy. You just kind of right-click where you want it. Let's add a point entity here. Let's see, info player start. And bam, there we go. You even get the correct player height shown in the editor and everything like that, so it's really handy. But again, you can't really rotate, or can you? Am I talking out my arse here? Okay, so you can rotate. You press R to rotate. That works on brushes as well. As you can see, you've got your rotate gizmo, which is very, again, very similar to Maya 3D Studio Max. If you've used those editors before, it's very, very similar. And uh, if I just add a light entity here, I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. So if we add just a light, there we go. And again, moving around entities is the same as moving brushes, so you use Alt to move up and down. And you can move on 2D planes just by dragging it. But you can see here in the entity editor, it's, it's very kind of rudimentary at the moment. You've got your class name, you've got your spawn flags, like all the stuff here. But like you notice it's missing a lot of the uh, the uh, keys, keys and values, like things like even just the basic light value of the light is missing here currently. So if you wanted to add it, you have to press add light 200. And then if, if you're using advanced Quake compile tools, you know, you want to add like weight, delay and all this other stuff. If you're using uh, the angles to create spotlights, you have to add all that stuff in manually as well. It'd be nice if you could get visual indicators for this kind of stuff, like perhaps even like dragging a gizmo out and then it having setting the light value would be a really nice uh, bit of feedback for a uh, sleepwalker there, being able to drag out light radiuses and have it update in the editor view would be awesome and again just having support for all the different key values and pairs would be uh, very cool okay guys that was a quick look at trench broom version 1003 by sleepwalker again it's in beta so it's going to be updated with new features all the time i would imagine uh, all the links you'll need are in the description below this video including links to the readme and the kind of tutorial things with all the keybinds and everything like that which you will need to learn to use this editor to maximum effect. Uh, personally I'm really impressed by this editor, I really enjoy it. The 3D editing once you get the hang of it without the 2D views is really really seamless to use, really smooth. It's a really really slick editor, that's the main feedback I've seen from all the mappers I've seen that have checked this editor out is it just feels really slick to use once you learn the uh, shortcuts. So do take the time to do that. And uh, I hope you enjoy using it as much as I have. I will see you next time.